you go. Okay, so um, we came along to Design Thinking back in oh, April or whenever it was, and it was just Bridget and I. We both teach grade one, um, and we loved it, learnt it all, and we went back and we got Jessie on board, who's our other grade one teacher. So that way our whole cohort was sort of heading in the same direction. Jessie had the big task of, of, you know, listening to two people who didn't quite understand it ourselves, um, and so we were trying to teach her, and um, she got very confused, as we all did, and so it's just been the three of us trying to muddle on through, um, and, yeah, basically, we started off with a um, space unit um, in the emergent, uh, the empathy sort of phase. As you can see, we tried to use as much technology as we could, but we didn't have many resources around our school. Um, and it covered the science and literacy part and one of the big things that came from this is we didn't have an overarching topic to begin which is what we should have done um, because the kids were just looking at the things love them but they had no guidance as to what what they had to do with it um, in reflection we our big epic question was just way too broad the kids just went every direction and admittedly we sort of started to drown them we didn't know what to do we didn't know where to take them so we sort of just continued to stumble through the dark and hope it'd get better um, so they sort of went along with us and we're more than happy to design things and come up with all of these great ideas and and be our little gu guinea pigs with the yes and and a hundred <laughs> ideas and and we made it look like we knew what we were doing um, so our first prototypes that came along, obviously we, we wasted a lot of time just trying to get our heads around it. So when it came to making the prototypes, we didn't really allow the kids enough time to make multiple prototypes. So the products that were produced were not really as good as what they could, the kids were capable of doing. And again, we had really limited resources. We had to go down to prep and beg and plead, that, <laughs> could they lend us stuff? We need stuff, can you help us out? So some of the pros and cons we came across, so pros, new ways of thinking, and it was really engaging for the children. Um, could bounce ideas off each other, which was good for me, because I had no idea what I was doing. Um, challenge, really challenged our teaching, so we really had to think outside the box, especially with our resourcing and what we had seen in other schools. Cons, uh, we had way too broad a topic. Uh, how can we learn more about the night sky? Um, we had lack of resources and finances to get more resources for it in a quick, hurried way. And in term three, this is our beginning of this term, we all came into this with more confidence and felt like we renewed everything. Um, we covered religion, maths, literacy, so we started with our box again. Mm -hmm. We did see, think and wonder and we began and the children started going off on the tangent, tangent of the Olympics and we were looking at fairness and sportsmanship and all those things and we want to basically start with um, is our playground always fair so we had to come back to this and so we had to really teach a guide them back here um, and then it led into is our playground fair well there's not a whole lot in our playground and Jo <laughs> came out um, and she was quite shocked at how desolate and <laughs> desert like our playground was and so the kids came up with that though we need to change it we need to put things in the playground that are going to make it more fair the boys football game was getting hectic and out of control because there were no guidelines. They had no football posts, they had no lines, um, they had no bibs or anything to, to notice, like know which team was which. Um, so we played the yes and game to kind of ideate different ways and different things we could make to put into the playground. Um, obviously they came up with let's have a water park and a skate ramp and we had to talk them through that's not actually possible. Um, and then they came up with things like we want to make some footy posts, let's get some board games together, dress up areas and then a writing area. So we split them then into groups to do with their interest. Um, and then this term, their prototyping, obviously we've felt more comfortable with the process so they've had a lot more time to sort of talk about their ideas, research their ideas and um, for me in particular I used our 40 minutes a week computer lab time more effectively this week to try and at this term rather, to try and get them researching as much as they possibly could. And um, they've started building models after, again, a number of attempts of coming up with stuff, and we're finding that it's a lot more productive this term. So pros and cons again this term. Uh, we found that by timetabling and design thinking time, made it a lot easier on us as well, because we knew that that time was already penciled in. Problem was more real life this term with the playground, and it was their playground, so they already owned it before we even began. We used the computer time more effectively, like Bridget said. 
cons, once again, lack of resources, but we're getting around that as we go. Um, and we're trying to implement it into a real life. Prototype might be a bit difficult, um, just because with our school, we're the only three involved and we haven't really had admin and things, so um, it's a bit difficult to bring those things <coughs> into the playground. But after seeing Kane's arcade, we've decided we're gonna go and pitch it to PNF and see what we can do to get some yeah. cheap resources and parent labor to help us to get some of their ideas in the playground. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you.